Today we'll be reacting to a TikTok video that was sent to me that is going to be a cautionary tale for anyone who thinks that just because other people are selling copyrighted materials in their Etsy stores or Amazon stores that it's okay if you do too. So let's just dive right into it and watch it together. I got out, I had all this to deal with. I was just trying to get my funds out to pay my bills and I couldn't get it out. When a single mom came home to Pinellas Park after a hospital stay for heart failure, she found a financial nightmare waiting for her. Yeah, she discovered that her online homemade gift shop had been sued in federal court by country music superstar Luke Combs. And worse, the judge had already ruled against her, ordering her to pay Combs $250,000. Desperate for answers she couldn't get on her own, she turned to Better Call Bankin. Jane Keith in Florida, like in most states, the law requires that you're formally served a lawsuit in person by a process server. That is no longer the case in Illinois, and Nicole Harness was served through an email that went to her junk mail folder. I had no idea that you didn't have to be served in person. I think this is a good time to go Google for yourself how you need to be served where you live. That way you know if you need to be checking your spam folder all the time. Hopefully you're not doing anything that would ever cause you to need to get a lawsuit suit, but just a really interesting thing that I had never heard of. This is Ghostface. Nicole Harness's only job is selling homemade tumblers and t-shirts through Amazon. She's a big Luke Combs fan and says after she went to his concert in Tampa this summer, she decided to offer a Luke Combs themed tumbler. After selling just 18 of them, she learned Combs sued her along with various others for selling counterfeit merchandise. The worst part, the case is already closed and the judge ordered her to pay $250,000 to Combs. It's very stressful. I think that's the scariest part about the United States legal system is they don't care how much money that you made off of it. You can sue people for whatever imaginary amount that you want for damages. And so I think this is an extra cautionary tale that you might not just get a trademark or copyright infringement against your shop. Your shop might not just get closed down. Those aren't the worst case scenarios that can happen like most people think when you sell this type of stuff in your store. It could be absolutely so, so much worse. And if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, when you're selling different items online like t-shirts, sweatshirts, tumblers, mugs, ornaments, all of those things, you need to be checking your trademarks to make sure that the words that you're putting on them aren't trademarked, and you need to avoid using copyrighted material. So like the other Tumblr she showed of Scream Face, that's from the Scream movies, you can't use the Scream Face in any of your designs. That company could come after her as well. I heard later in the video that she also has Disney merchandise, Taylor Swift merchandise, Grinch merchandise. You don't have a license to sell any of these types of things in your store unless you actually get a license and are paying them a portion of your sales and it can be very hard to get approved for those types of things. And so $250,000 was the fee that she was ordered to pay, even though she only sold 18 of these. So keep that in mind, even if you never sell one of them, you could get in trouble for having them in your store. And so, you know, she goes on, I won't make you watch the entire video, but I will link it down below. She goes on to say that she didn't know better, that she feels really bad about it, that her funds are locked up in her Amazon account, and that is her main source of income. And she pleads for the country music star to actually take it back. Now the country music star did respond and actually take back the charges. So she's not going to have to pay this 250,000. But if she leaves those other items up in her store that are infringing on lots of other brands, then she might run into this exact same issue down the road. And so I wanted to make this video as a cautionary tale because again, people might be thinking, you know, they're never gonna find me. There's thousands of other shops selling these things on Etsy or on Amazon. So how are they gonna find me? but sometimes they do. And I don't wanna see anything like this happen to anyone watching my channel or this video. So please keep yourself safe. Don't sell things that are infringing on someone else's works, whether that's books or TV shows or movies. You can't say the people's characters' names, you can't use their likeness, you can't do celebrities' names or anything that looks like them. All of those things are owned by that person or by that brand. And I know that the new trademark website did get an update recently, so make sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications if you wanna learn how to actually check trademarks in the new system. I'm working on a new tutorial to replace my old one on how to check those trademarks to keep yourself safe 
safe from the sneakier things. Copyright infringement can be pretty obvious sometimes, but trademark infringement sometimes is a little bit more difficult to tell if words are trademarked for certain items. But it is your due diligence as the shop owner to make sure that you understand these things, you check these things, and that you are compliant because it can be your butt on the line if you do it wrong. Now, one of the only exceptions to sell anything even close to related to something that is copyrighted would be parody merchandise. And in all the research that I've done, I've seen that this is able to be sold in people's stores. So I'll give you an exact example so you know what I mean by parody. So there's a Sir Mix-a-Lot song that says, I like them real big and juicy. And then a lot of people this year and last year made shirts that say, I like them real thick and sprucey and had Christmas trees on it. And so as long as there's nothing that says Sir Mix-a-Lot, there's nothing that kind of relates to his song name, none of the actual lyrics, right? And then no pictures of the artist or anything along those lines, you're able to do that because it's your own creative works that you've made up kind of a play on words that's similar. People can read it and tell, oh, that's a play on this, but it's not actually infringing. So that type of thing, as far as the research I've done, is okay to do, but always please do your own research because this is your business and your money and you are going to be the one that's held accountable for protecting it. So just as a disclaimer, I am not a lawyer and I am just giving you the information to the best of my ability. This is not legal advice. So make sure to keep your shops safe this holiday season and headed into 2024 so you don't run into any issues like this. And if you haven't gotten started with your print on demand business, but you wanna know how to get into it and do it right and do it safely, then I will link down below my free eight module mini course that teaches you how to set up your shop, create your first items and list them in your store. And I will be updating that very soon with the new trademark tutorial that's coming out soon as well. But in the meantime, all of you stay safe out there. I hope you had a wonderful holiday season. And if you didn't have the holiday season that you wanted, please remember that this business takes time to build. I've never once said on this channel that it's a get rich quick type of business. And this is something that you should be starting and be in the long haul for. You will start this business and you might have it the next two, five, 10, who knows, 20 years. Etsy didn't even exist. 20 years ago. So who knows what the future will hold, but I hope that you'll take the time and give yourself the freedom to slowly build up your skills. You'll see other people around you get started and get sales faster, but everyone comes into this with different skill levels, different assets, different things that they already know, and you might need a little bit more time. So please be patient and be so proud of yourself for trying something new. I've heard a statistic that 99% of the world is consumers and only 1% is creators. So be so proud of yourself that you're on that 1% creator line where you're trying to create and share and bring new beautiful things into the world and bring that energy with you to your designs, right? We don't want you going and just copying what other people have because that can be copyright infringement too, just like using something from a TV show or a movie can be copyright infringement. So try and actually add value. You know, if you're just saying, okay, I see that this person was really successful with this, I'm gonna say the same words in the same layout with maybe a teeny bit different of a color or a teeny bit different of a font. You're not gonna be as successful as if you look and you're like, oh, how could I mix this niche with the upcoming holiday? Or how could I change the words around to be a little bit more clever or be a little bit different and add value and stand out in the search results? Because that's the way that you're gonna win. You'll see videos all the time being like, this is the hack, this is the trick, do this to make money. But there is no shortcut to being creative and taking your time and making sure you're adding value to the search results. There's no secret sauce. That's the way to find the success. So I hope that this video was a cautionary tale for you to stay away from the copyrighted and trademarked infringement that can really cause you a lot of harm in your life and in your business. And also, I hope that this talk here at the end will motivate you that it just takes time to build this kind of business. Try to be patient and really do your best to add value you and be unique and I promise you will get there and you can do this whether you believe in yourself or not or the people in your life believe in yourself or not I believe in you I've seen thousands of my students 
be successful, start stores, make sales, quit their jobs, and do amazing with this. And if they all can do it, you can do it too. So just know that I am so proud of you and you should be so proud of yourself. And I'll link a video after this one of the five things that you should not sell in your store that you might not know are copyrighted. So go ahead and watch that one next. And as always, thank you so much for watching all the way until the end, and I'll see you in the next one.